Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownload Blog. So last week I made a video going over how to use a mouse or trackpad with your iPad and iPad OS 13.4, but I mainly focused on how to use Apple's trackpad and Magic Mouse. But in this video, I wanna give just general tips and tricks for getting the most out of your mouse. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I just wanna reiterate from last time. So I guess tip number one is that there are three levels of settings for your mice. So the first is in general and then trackpad and mouse about uh, four tabs down and this will vary it'll say trackpad or mouse or both depending on what you have connected but once your device is connecting here you have a few settings tracking speed which obviously changes how fast your cursor moves natural scrolling which direction the mouse will scroll and then whether your secondary click is right or left and i like it to be right and i think most people have that as well it's pretty standard Okay, secondly, you can find more settings in accessibility and then pointer control. Here you have a few settings, which we'll go into in a second. And then third, you have assistive touch settings, which if you go into, you can customize the buttons on your mouse. But I wanna go back to the pointer control options because there's several great tips in here. So first, changing the color actually does a lot. So you can have um, a different stroke size if you want or not. So enlarge the pointer size just so you can see what's happening. So you can do it none, and it's just gonna be kind of like a gray mouse, like 50% transparency. Um, or you can have a white or blue, red, green, yellow, or orange border, and you can change how thick the stroke is to make it pretty excessive. So for instance, if I'm in text selection mode and I have this colored pointer on, when I drag it over text, it looks like packing tape or um, a highlighter. I think it just looks really cool how it goes over the text. I think that's just a really good look and I'm a fan of it. I think it's kind of fun and you can change the color of that, of course, to whatever you want. But I do like how the text selection works with this turned on. Now, additionally, what it changes is the pointer animations if you have that turned on. So by default, Apple's pointer animations are turned on and that's kind of like the unique iPad look what you've seen in the commercials. So with this on, the cursor kind of morphs and dissolves into the buttons that you are clicking. So you see up here in the accessibility, when I go over that, it will dissolve the cursor right into the button. And you can see if I go into something like Safari, again, if I put it over an icon, it will kind of dissolve into that and the cursor will disappear. Now this also just has a little bit more movement. So you can see a little bit of wiggling there, which is kind of like the reduce motion option. So you can turn off pointer animations. It doesn't dissolve the cursor. The cursor just stays where it is. There isn't as much movement and it doesn't have that kind of unique iPad effect. But what's next is actually really cool. So if you go into your assistive touch settings, which you can do from the bottom of the pointer control settings, or you can go down to the accessibility, touch, assistive touch, and then you have to turn assistive touch on. So here's a few settings. So you can turn the idle capacity down. So this assistive touch menu is not in the way. And then you can turn off, always show menu so that you won't have to see that menu anymore. Then if you turn on dwell control, and then you make the uh, fallback action pause dwell, and then you turn on hot corners, you can actually have hot corners on your iPad just like you have it on your Mac. So for instance, I have top left turned on to screenshot and I have this bottom setting turned down to 0.25 seconds. So when I go to the left corner, it will screenshot. And like, how cool is that? I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. So again, uh, you can customize this for each of the four corners um, and you can see there's tons of different options. Screenshot, um, voice control, volume, double tap, dock, all this kind of stuff, including Siri shortcuts. So this is a really cool setting. Now it does kind of mess with your iPad um, and it turns off some other features. So you'll have to experiment with whether you like that or not, but you can use hot corners on your iPad with this dual control feature turned on. I made a whole video talking about this. So you can click the top right of the screen to view that, or you can click the link in the description if you want to see it. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about Paperlike, which is the sponsor of this video, and Paperlike adds a great texture to your screen, and it's amazing if you're using the Apple Pencil, like it's a must-have accessory. When you're writing on the screen, it feels like you're writing on paper. It has that gritty texture and a great sound, 
and it also takes away the fingerprints and the reflection from your iPad. It's a little bit pricey, but I think it's a great investment for your iPad if you wanna keep away scratches, get rid of the fingerprints and give it a great texture for just your fingers or for your Apple Pencil. So check the link in the description if you wanna check out Paperlike for your iPad Pro or any iPad that you have, it's a great accessory. Again, link in the description for Paperlike 2. Now another level of settings is also in assistive touch under accessibility. So if you go into devices, you can click on your mouse. And if you're using a mouse that has extra buttons, such as my Logitech button here, you can customize the additional buttons, clicking the button up top on the screen. And then you click the button on the mouse that you wanna customize and will allow you to change the settings for what that does. So for instance, I have my middle click button set to app switcher. So when I click this button, it'll pull up the multitasking menu and that's awesome. You can also do things like volume up or down. So I can use these plus and minus buttons on the side of my mouse to change the volume. Um, you can go home, you can pull up the dock, you can screenshot, there's a whole bunch of things. But the next tip is that you can also do Siri shortcuts. So if you know the Siri shortcut app on your iPad, you can mess around with that and trigger any of the shortcuts using this. So if you want to have something that pulls up a specific app or website or something like that, with one click of your mouse, you can pull that up, which is pretty great. Now I just wanna show one really cool trick that you can do with this, the hold and drag options. So for instance, if I go into photos and I use the button that I designated, which is this middle click, and I click on that, it does a hold and drag. So I don't have anything selected on my mouse, but I can still hold and drag this. So if I wanna go into a different application and drag and drop, I can do that. And you can see that I just brought this in here. So that's just a really cool method of um, holding something. So you can see, again, not holding anything, but it is selecting this so that I can go into a different application and then drag and drop. So that's just a really cool application of this feature to customize the buttons on your mouse. Okay, the next tip I have. So I talked about before how you just put your mouse in the corner and you can click for control center or for multitasking or for going home. You just click that button and it takes you home. But you don't actually have to click. And this takes kind of a little bit of testing out and practicing. So if you go down kind of abruptly and then keep putting it down, you can see that it'll actually go home without any clicking. So again, I can do that in the top left-hand corner. I didn't click, I just kept moving the mouse. So again, we'll try the right corner. If you just keep moving, uh, it won't require a click. So again, it takes a little bit of practice because you basically just have to keep moving, but it does work. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it actually works kind of nicely. It just requires a little bit of more effort. Um, but I think if you practice it, it could work pretty well. And you can also get into the multitasking from the home screen by going into that. Next, so say you're in something like Safari. So you can control click on something to pull up the right hand click. Again, that's pretty standard. Then you can also option click, which will download whatever you just clicked on. So you see that it just went to the download section right there, or you can command click. And of course this will just open up something in a different tab uh, behind in a background tab. So you have the control option and command keys if you have a keyboard attached with your mouse for three more customization levels. Now I just mentioned the right click and the right click is great. So the next tip is just utilizing your right click on your mouse because that pulls up awesome settings uh, and it feels just like you're using it on a computer. So again, I can do it from messages um, or any app. You can just right click and it'll give you different controls. You can do it in Safari. You can do it in photos. You can do it in uh, music and any of these, it just pulls up the quick menu controls for this and I can copy or share a favorite. So the right hand click just works really well and we've never had um, a right click like this with iOS 13, iPad OS 13, but now you have it. And then finally, you can actually use the long click to preview things. So if I want to preview a link, I can click and hold a while, and then I can fully click to get into that, or I click out of it and it won't open. So you can use this for messages, you can use it for photos or mail or Safari or anything like that a long click of the mouse will emulate a long click of the finger. So anyway, those are some tips for using your mouse trackpad um, and cursor for the iPad Pro or any iPad that you have 
It's really powerful and I hope these tips were helpful and you can check out the whole guide I did linked in the description. You can also check out the hot corners video I made. And then finally, make sure to check out Paperlike with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this was useful.